in this video we're trying to um, discuss the Lord's Prayer for the new believer the one who has just uh, tries to find God and uh, they know about this Lord's Prayer it says our Father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. So in the first uh, part, we will discuss three aspects. That's our Father who art in heaven, then hallowed be thy name, then thy kingdom come. The first two, our Father which art in heaven, and hallowed be thy name, they are quite straightforward. But uh, in the discussion of thy kingdom come, we have to have a clarification of the difference between the kingdom of God and then the kingdom of heaven. So it says, Our Father which art in heaven. This statement is a statement of reassurance to the believer that they are talking to their father. The realization at the beginning of prayer of the father-son, father-daughter connection enables the believer to approach God confidently understanding God's willingness to answer our prayer and praise. The believer is reassured in their mind that they are talking to their father. This is what we are expected to know, and that is the best atmosphere uh, for prayer, is when you see God as your father and you relate to him as such. Uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 11, the word of God says, Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will give him a snake? That if you, though being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your father give good gifts to those who ask him? This reassures the believer of God's presence and favor during prayer. The next is, Hallowed be thy name, which means that God's name is both sacred and sovereign and holy and highly revered. This is the time you indicate God's, your recognition of God's uh, name and your understanding and acknowledgement. In Exodus 27, the third of the Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses is that you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. So no one calls their earthly father by their earthly name. Instead, you call him Papa or my father. This is sufficient to call God my father or my Lord. Then the third aspect is the aspect of thy kingdom come and it's, there's a clarification in John 3 about the kingdom of God, and there's a clarification about what the kingdom of heaven is in Matthew 13. In John chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, and Jesus told him that the kingdom of God is the same as to become born again. In order to receive the forgiveness of sin and assurance of eternal life, you will pray a prayer of commitment of your life to God and turn your past, turn from your past sinful ways and begin to follow God's ways. This is what it means by the kingdom of God. This is different from the kingdom of heaven. In Luke chapter 9, verse 27, Jesus said, But I tell you the truth, there be some here which will shall not taste of death until they see the kingdom of God. Jesus was referring that those people will become born again before they see death. These persons became born again, that is, saw, received the kingdom of God in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, when the apostles preached. The kingdom of heaven, from the way it is described in Matthew, chapter 13, uh, uh, will be in two parts. The first part of the kingdom of heaven is before Christ returns which is now, and the second part, or the second phase, is after the return, the second return of Jesus Christ. In the first phase, as we can see in Matthew chapter 13, God allows both the genuine believers who received the kingdom of God by the prayer of salvation to live side by side with those who are not mindful to refrain from sin and are disobedient to God and do not allow God's word to fill their spirit and equip them for things of God. 
So in the first phase of the kingdom of heaven, according to Matthew 13, the good seed will live side by side with the tares. Those who are living in conformity to God's words and God's ways and are mindful to do what he says, will live side by side with those who have no regard for the things of God. And after a while, then uh, both the good seed and the tares will be separated from each other. That is where it says that, again, the kingdom of heaven will be let in Matthew 13, 24 to 30, it says, let both grow together until they harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye first the tents, bind them in bundles and burn them and gather them. And that there has to be a preaching of the gospel to the ends of the earth before, before the end comes. So, the prayer in this particular case of clarification is that my Father in heaven, I'm grateful to be your child. I'm thankful that you are pleased every day to hear my prayer and praise. My Father and my Lord, I recognize the sacredness of your name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Enable me through your Holy Spirit to be constantly mindful to follow your way and fill my spirit with your word and show your love to others so that they can come to know you before your second coming. So the part two of the Lord's Prayer deals with thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and then give us this day our daily bread. So thy will be done on earth as it is, as it is in heaven. This aspect has two parts, that the will of God will be done in my life, and that may the will of God be done in the life of others. In my life, Jesus asked the believer to pause, to pray, and find what God wants and approve before they do anything. Believers must allow, must not allow covetousness, competition with others, and lack of sensitivity to, to God's whisper to be the reason for their wrong decisions. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat. Before any decision, believer must halt and hear God's whisper in their mind first, so that we will do the will of God on earth, that is, in our lives, just as the will of God is done in heaven. Receive the reassurances in your spirit first before you move into your new home that you will live in when choosing your spouse, the car that you want to buy, and in every area of one's life. That will be done on earth, it says in Psalm 81, verse 11 to 6, that my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would have none of me. So I gave them up to their own hearts lost and they walked in their own counsel. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and they have walked in my ways. The, their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of wheat and honey. Out of the rock shall, I be, shall they have been satisfied. Joyful hope in your mind and a restful spirit are the evidences that your decision you want to take conforms in line to God's will. So the believer must also pray for the will of God in the life of others, that by showing God's love to others, they may come to the knowledge of Christ's suffering and death on the cross for them and be able to accept God's love and sacrifice. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, be made conformable, and says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations about God's love baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe the things that God said so that the will of God, salvation, can happen to them. So the prayer in this case is, Lord, let thy will be done in my life, in the life of others. Let me pause to pray and carefully find your will in my life before I take any decision. Let your decision be done will be done in the life of others so that they come to understand and embrace your love and sacrifice for them. Then the, third, the fifth part of the Lord's Prayer is give us this day our daily bread. 
Now, firstly, the believer must understand that divine provision is because of God's mercy, not your effort. In Psalm 127, verse 1, it says, Except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that build it. And in Romans 9, 16, it says, so, so then, it is not of him that wills, but of him that runs, but God that showed mercy. So, however, depending on the mercy of God, we also have three practical aspects from our own side. First, you prayerfully do your research and start a good business or find a good job and ask God for excellence and favor on your job. Second is to give with spiritual understanding to others and to the church and to everyone in need. Third is to make sure that you observe the Sabbath. It is the act of faith and obedience that the blessing of God is more than enough for the work you have done for six days of the week and you do not require the one on the seventh day. Uh, giving with spiritual understanding to others in need the requires that in John, in Luke chapter 10, verse 30 to 37, Jesus said, A certain man went from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came certain priests that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side, and likewise the Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, he joined it, came there where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, went to him and bound up his wound, pouring oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever you thou spend more, when I come again, I will repay thee. And Jesus said, Which now of these three was the neighbor of unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that shows mercy to him, and said, Go and do thou likewise. So it is, on, it is the believer to, it is the duty and responsibility of the believer to understand and to incline themselves to in the spiritual understanding. God is a spirit, he says, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The testament, the, the believer is supposed to be in the spirit when they are given, that you should have an inclination in the spirit to know the place. So in this particular situation, the in the spirit inclination, the man, the Samaritan was able to understand that the altar of God was that half dead man. And the truth, which is what God is asking from him, is the payment for the hospital bill of this individual. So in this story, the good Samaritan recognized where the altar of God was and what God was asking from him. So giving with spiritual understanding and inclination usually brings reward. In Genesis chapter 18, verse 1 to 4, Abraham was able to recognize the three godly persons that were passing by as men. That is, he was in the spirit and he hastened to do the truth, which is what God was asking for him. That is, to give them a fine meal, butter, cakes, and to kill a calf for them. So it is to get the blessing from God, you have to recognize in the spirit where the altar of God is part time and what God is asking from you. Then the third aspect of the give us this day our daily bread is the understanding of the significance of Sabbath. No true believer is expected to work for seven days in a week. There's supposed to be one day that you are supposed to rest and honor God. Six days of the week you are supposed to walk, and that is the commandment in Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. You will not walk. Your, your staff will not walk. Nobody in your household is expected to walk. So specifically, you can choose a different day apart from Saturday or Sunday, to observe your Sabbath, if by nature of your work, 
you are working on Saturday and Sunday. Jesus likely chose a different day of the week between Monday to Thursday to observe his own Sabbath of rest because he was a rabbi and expected to walk in the temple on Saturday to teach, to preach, and to heal. So the seventh day can be another day of the week that you are off from work or your business and you'll be able to use that day for rest. However, if it is possible, it is better to have your Sabbath on the same day with others so that you can attend what the Bible calls the Holy Convocation in Leviticus 23.3 where the children of God will come together to praise and worship God. So the, if the seventh day is on the same day, the Holy Convocation, God commands the blessing. Psalm 133, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. That is the Convocation. It is like a precious ointment, for there God commanded the blessing. The blessing is what you have that brings the favor and provision for you. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 1 to 13, Jesus went to the synagogue and he was able to heal a man whose hand was withered. And the people were complaining, but he said to them that even if you have a sheep and it falls into the uh, pit on the Sabbath, you will remove the, the sheep, that a man is more important than sheep. So the prayer is, Lord, let thy will be done in my life and the life of others. Let me pray for your will carefully and find in my mind what you said before I take any decision. Let your will be done in my life of all, and the life of others so that they can come to understand and embrace your love and sacrifice for them. I ask that you provide for me by your divine favor and mercy and through my work and business. Help me to recognize your expectation of me to give to your church and to others and to observe Sabbath. So the third aspect of the Lord's Prayer here involves four parts. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive the trespass of others. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive the trespass of others. The believer's readiness to forgive is the evidence that the believer is grateful to God for forgiving them of their sins. And here Jesus put a direct connection. Anyone who refuses to forgive others have no sense of understanding of the gravity of God's love to clear off their sins. Here you are acknowledging your understanding that God will not forgive your sins if you choose not to forgive the sins of others. Then, Lord, help me to always remember your mercies towards me and your goodness. Forgive me of my sins as I readily forgive others. Colossians chapter 3, verse 13, it says, Forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, also do ye. Then the, thought, the other aspect is lead us not into temptation. That is, it is not that temptations will not come. Temptations will always come. But the prayer here is that we do not fall into the temptation. We are, we are to pray not to fall. Either God is testing your trust in Him, or the devil is trying to lure you away from God. In some situations, the believer is able to feel from within that God knows that they will decide to trust Him and do what His Word says, rather than compromising. Abraham was able to know that God can raise Isaac from the dead even if he sacrificed him on Mount Moriah in obedience. In Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 to 19, he says God did tempt Abraham, but Abraham was able to overcome the temptation by taking Isaac to where God said, and then God asked him not to sacrifice Isaac. So the prayer is, Lord, help me in situations of test to trust you and to follow your word and not to give room to compromise. Lead us not into temptation. The devil tried to lure Jesus away from the truth of God's word by twisting the meaning of the word of God to Jesus so that Jesus can perceive a different and incorrect understanding of what God said. That happened in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 11. Then Jesus was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Then the devil took him up to a holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, 
lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. So the prayer here is, Lord, let me, let your Holy Spirit bring your word to my remembrance and let me not feel any temptation. Then the other aspect is the eighth part of the prayer is deliver us from evil. The otherwise meaning deliver us from danger. This involves three aspects. Inclining to the voice of the Spirit of God, directing you away from the place of danger. The presence of the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus, which represents the presence of Jesus. And by the intervention of God's angels. The guiding voice of God's Holy Spirit in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, that thy ears shall hear the word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn from the right and when ye turn from the Lord left. Lord, help me to be sensitive to hear the whisper of your Holy Spirit to direct me away from danger. There may be problem on one area, there may be problem in another area, but the voice and the guiding of the Spirit, you are able to stay away from where the danger is. So in Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, wherefore God has highly exalted the name of Jesus and given him a name that is above every name, that at, that at the name of Jesus every knee must bow, in things of heaven, on things under the earth, and things under the earth. So the prayer is, I put the name of Jesus upon myself and the blood of Jesus upon myself and my family. I will not see evil inside my home or outside. Then the other one is the angelic presence in Psalm 91, verse 10 to 11, There shall no evil before thee, neither shall any plague come nigh unto thy dwelling. He shall give his angels charge over thee, in order to protect thee in all thy ways. So, the ninth aspect, which is the last part of the Lord's prayer, he says, For thy, thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. The believer is rejoicing that God is king in, in the heavenly kingdom, that the believer belongs and they have God's kingly presence and power and glory as they go out to face the day whatever situations are there and challenges are there this is an expression of faith in God in Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 to 20 he says all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth go ye therefore and teach baptize in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit so I'm with you always even to the end the world. So in Isaiah 54 verse 10 to 14 it says the mountains shall depart and the hills will be removed but my kindness shall not depart from thee neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. Great shall be the peace of thy children. In righteousness thou shalt be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression and from and thou shalt not fear for terror it will not come nigh unto thee. So for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory. Lord, I'm thankful. Lord, I'm thankful as I trust in your kingly presence in my life, your power and your glory upon me as I go through the day and the night. Amen. So, the prayer in, with the Lord's prayer for the believer with an expanded understanding will go forth like this. My Father in heaven, I'm grateful to be your child. I'm thankful that you are pleased to hear my prayer and praise. I recognize the sacredness of your name. Hallowed be your name, Lord. I call you, Lord, my heavenly Father. Thy kingdom come. Lord, enable me through your Holy Spirit to be constantly mindful, to fill my spirit with your word and to follow your way and to show your love to others so that they can come to know you and follow you as I wait for your, the kingdom of heaven that will come after Jesus Christ returns. Lord, help me. Thy will be done in my life and in the life of others. Help me to pause and pray carefully and find your will in my mind before I take any decision. You let your will be done in my life so, and the life of others so that they can come to understand and embrace your love and sacrifice for them. I ask that you provide for me by your divine favor and mercy through my work or business as I recognize that you expect me to give to your church and to others and as I observe the Sabbath, Lord, help me to always remember your mercies towards me and your forgiveness and your goodness. Forgive me for my sins as I readily forgive others 
of their sins. Lord, let your Holy Spirit bring your word to my remembrance and let me not feel any temptation. Lord, help me in situations of test to trust you and follow your word and not give room to compromise. Lord, send your angel to deliver me from evil. I ask the name and the blood of Jesus on me and my family to deliver me from danger. Lord, I am thankful and I trust in your kingly presence in my life, your power and your glory upon me as I go through the day and through the night. Amen.